Hello, scholars. My name is Joseph A.G.K. Og. Uh, the topic of our lecture this night is risk and return. And then um, we will have several lectures in the coming weeks on this topic, risk and return. There are many subtopics that we'll be covering in this coming weeks, and they will come under the main topic of risk and return. Uh, first of all, let me uh, make sure <clears throat> that you are seeing this. I think I, I like usually, I, usually, I often open so many pages. So I want to close some of them. Yeah, I'm gonna close uh, some of them so that you don't, do not interfere with our, with our um, lecture tonight. I think we have enough. Good, risk and return. Now, investors, of course, want to make money. I mean, that is the whole idea of investment, to make money. But investors also dislike risk. They don't like risk. Well, how can you make money if there's no risk? If there's no risk, that means everybody knows about it. If there's no risk, everybody knows about it. That means nobody makes money. Anyway, the idea that phenomenon. Or, or, well, maybe I should put it in a different way, because investors dislike risk. The the cons the the, the fact that they dis dislike dislike risk, that it is given a name. It is called risk aversion. Well, the tendency is the best word to use here. The tendency for investors to uh, dislike risk and try to avoid it as much as possible was what you call risk aversion. So what does this mean? It means that people will invest in a relatively um, risky asset if and only if they expect to receive high returns. That is the only thing that motivates people to invest in a very risky assets. Yeah. If that asset is going to um, bring good huge return, or if that if that investment is going to uh, bring huge return, then it will be attractive to investors. I'll give you examples. Since something like smuggling, uh, buying uh, you know smuggling uh, as a business or even a drug business, it is so very risky. One day you are in jail. One day you are you know, so you can you can spend. Yeah, several maybe five years enjoying your life, then for 20 years you are in jail. Yet people go into that business. Why? Because of the amount of um uh the um profits that they make. It is highly risky, but the return is so big that it is still attractive to some people. Uh, definitely not me. <laughs> I like I like small risk, yeah, that's things that are genuine. Anyway, I think you get the point. The higher the perceived risk, the higher the expected rate of return for most investments. So uh, this point, what, what, does, uh, what we can get from this brief introduction is that uh, risk and return goes hand in hand. Uh, to make a meaningful judgment about risk and return, we need to know the size of the investment, the timing of the return. So the scale of the investment and the timing of the return. Now, when we talk about risk, especially in financial investment, we are referring to the uncertainty or the volatility involved with any project or any investment. That was in the risk. Uncertainty, where you might lose or you might gain. Volatility, the investment can be uh, worth less today and tomorrow worth a lot. Then next day he worth almost like nothing. So all these things are what we consider risk. You might lose the investment or it might become worth less or it might worth more. So um, I believe you have to get a point now. 
And this, we are ready to move to the next stage of the lecture, uh, which is um, the return on investment. I will show you a simple way of calculating the return on, return on investment. This is just, uh, most textbooks don't ask you these questions. Just a basic, uh, the most basic way of calculating uh, return on investment. Excuse me. So, um, the formula is the uh, rate of return equals amount received minus amount invested divided by the amount invested. Of course, this is a percentage. Uh, one, one, one good example will help us to understand this bit. So suppose if you pay $500 for an investment that returns $600 in one year, what is your annual rate of return? This is just an example. You can make it five thousand dollars. It doesn't seem as it good. So, um, now I will make it. Uh, yeah, if I it's just for an explanation. So, what is the annual rate of return? So, amount received is six hundred dollars. Amount invested is five hundred dollars. So, rate of return is is the amount received minus the amount invested uh, divided by the amount invested times 100 so i normally i i i, I would I like my students to uh, get used to uh doing work using excel so i'm gonna put this in excel um and then we calculate it from there so the the, the amount <clears throat> um, amount received is 600 dollars an amount invested was five hundred dollars. Five hundred five hundred. Making sure that you guys are uh, seeing this. Okay, good. Then rate of return. Uh, if you remember, if you can recall, it is according to this formula. Amount received minus amount invested divided by the amount invested. Then, of course, you compare your answer to uh, percent. Which I did here as well. 600 by 500, by 500 times 100, and I got 20%. So I'm going to show you the same thing in Excel. So we have <clears throat> in Excel, before you start any work, put a call sign on the cell to show that you are ready to do some calculations. So basically, you are putting that cell in a ready mode. Put a parenthesis, click on the 600. Uh, minus 500, close the parenthesis, divided by, in a cell, forward slash is this uh, division by 500. And press the enter key, 20.2. Now you can convert this to percent by clicking on the percent symbol right here. Okay. So the return, rate of return for this investment is 20%. Yeah. Rate of return for this investment is 20%. Okay. At this point, uh, we are ready to proceed with something more uh, rigorous. Uh, okay. Now, the asset risk. Asset risk, uh, we view it in two ways. As a standalone risk. Uh, in this case, the asset is considered in isolation, you know. Uh, uh, in other words, an asset standalone risk means the risk that you, the investor, would face if you hold only one asset. And I'm gonna give you an example of that. Uh, suppose that you have $10,000 to invest, okay? This is how much you want to have to invest, $10,000. Okay, excuse me. Make sure you are seeing this. Yep, you guys are seeing it. So you have $10,000 to invest. And you put that, use that $10,000 to buy Bank of American stock. Stock. That is for standalone risk. See? So if Bank of America became uh, stock rises, you make money. But if the if the score this the this their the stock falls, you know, decrease in value, 
you lose money. And if Bank of America goes out of business, you lose your you lose your entire investment. So that is standalone risk. Okay. Uh, um, so what does this mean? It means that um for an investor uh, uh that is exposed to a standalone risk is an investor that have eat his his or her entire investment in one asset and that investor can lose them you know if that company goes out of business or the value falls now on a portfolio basis is where the asset is held on and that investment is held on a number of assets in the portfolio when we say portfolio we mean a a collection, a collection of financial investments like stocks, bonds, uh, commodities, cash, etc. So, um, in, if you have your investment in a portfolio, that means you have your investments, uh, in a range of uh, assets like stocks, bond, and cash equivalents. So, now um, for uh, examining uh, investment risk on portfolio basis goes this way. You have suppose you have ten thousand dollars to invest instead of putting the whole money in one one uh, company stock, you spread it like I have here, ten thousand one thousand dollars invested in Bank of America stocks, uh one thousand dollars invested in U.S. Treasury bills. Excuse me, the one thousand dollars invested in Nigerian bill Treasury. I use Nigerian Treasury bills because um Nigeria is a uh, risky country to invest. Many most countries that are risk have risky investments uh, that are risky. I mean, what I mean by risk is that the investment climate is such that you can, can you can easily easily lose your money. But because they are risky, they pay more. So Nigerian Treasury Bill pays much more than you make. You are going to make more money in Nigerian Treasury Bill than in U.S. Treasury Bill. However, you can lose your money. Yeah, easily. The same thing with not only Nigeria, uh, there are other countries like that, like even Russia, even China is more risky than US. You can make more money from you uh Chinese treasury bills than US treasury bills. However, you can lose your investment in China very very easy. The government can confiscate your assets. Same thing with Brazil, uh Mexico. So that's why I I'm I'm breaking that same ten thousand dollars. You're spreading that investment into different um assets, therefore decreasing your risk. Uh, see, Amazon stock two thousand dollars, Walmart stock two thousand. So, if Bank of America goes out of business, you still have other investments. You can't lose all your money. You can only you will only lose one thousand dollars. Unlike before, when you lose the entire amount of money, so you still have your treasury bill investment, you still have your Amazon investment, you still have some money in zero, zero price. So there is no way all this company will go out of business at the same time. So that when in that case, when we look at uh, investment risk in that fashion, we say that we are looking at it on a portfolio risk. Portfolio has less risk than standalone uh, you know investment okay um now uh let's go back to our uh, <clears throat> our um presentation now um at this point we can look at uh, what we call expected rate of return the chance that an event will occur is called a that event probability. I'm sure you must have learned this from your uh, statistics class. Uh, the chance that, uh, of making profit is also a probability. So if all the possible events or outcomes are listed, all the possible events, all the possible profits are listed, and if the probability is assigned to each of them, we call it a probability distribution. So um, many of us uh, in the academics and um, fund managers, uh, we, we, we like to use a particular stock probability distribution to determine the possible return that the stock will yield in the future. You know, we like to do that. 
So that will lead us to, to, have, to calculating um, expected rate of return. So in other words, the expected rate of return simply means the uh, weighted average of possible returns from, from a given investment. Uh, and the weights we are talking about here means the probabilities. Yeah. How do we calculate it? They say that the expected rate of return is R uh, count. So if you have two, let's say you have, uh, depending on the number of investments you have, the expected rate of return is the return times the probability of that return. That means for this story, a return one times the probability of return one plus return two times the probability of return two plus return n times the probability of return n. So each return amount times the probability of that return. That gives us the expected return. You may not know this, but it applies to all investments. There's always the probability that an investment may not give us what we you know, expect from that investment. So summarizing it uh, using the formula, we have that the expected rate of return R hat is sum of now when you look at this symbol, it looks like a monster, but it actually it means this plus sum. All these pluses that you see here are presented by this symbol here. So sum of Ri times the probability of I or probability of Ri. So sum of the return times the probability of that return. Yeah. So let's see how this works. For example. But before that, I want to explain one more thing. How we use standard deviation in the investment world. Well, the main thing we use standard deviation is for is to use it to measure risk. For one simple reason, which is that the standard deviation measures the range of an investment performance, uh, which means that um that the bigger, the greater the standard deviation, the greater the investment risk or volatility. So, uh, and also the smaller the standard deviation, the tighter the probability distribution and hence the lower the risk of an investment and so on and so forth. So, um, you can also put it this way, that the smaller the standard deviation, the less risky an investment would be, you know, dollar for dollar, which means that the, the larger the standard deviation, the more risky the investment would be. Now, let's look at this. Question number one, two says, an investment has a 20% chance of producing uh, 25% return, a 60% chance of producing 10% return, and the 20% chance of producing negative 50% return. Negative return means loss. Eh? What is the expected return? Uh, and what is the standard deviation? Okay. Now, that means um, to solve this, we have, uh, we're going to use, to, to find the uh, expected return, we have, we're going to use this formula here. Sum of return times the probability of those returns. So first, it, the first sentence said, an investment has 20% chance, excuse me, of producing 25% return. P1 is 20%, R1 is 25%. It also said that it has 60% chance of producing a 10% return. So P2 is 60%, R2 is 10%, and so forth. So what is the, expected return and what is the standard deviation. For this kind of thing, we make a table of values. Uh, so I'm gonna take you to Excel. Let me write them down first of all. And then I'll take you to Excel where we can put these numbers in. I got um, P1 equals 20% and R1 is 25%. Uh, P1 is the first uh, probability. P2 is 60% and R2 is 10%. And then P3 is 
20%, and R3 is negative 15%. So I'm going to uh, take you to the uh, cell and then we can get these answers for the expected return and the standard deviation. So uh, taking you the, <clears throat> here now. So we have that return R1 is uh, 25%, which is 0 0.25. And then R2 is 10%, which is 0 0.10. 0. And then R3 is negative 15%, negative 0 0.15. Uh, the probability for that's P1 is 20%, 0 0.20. Okay, P2 is 60%, 0 0.60. And then uh, P3 is 20%, 0 0.20. Okay. Now, our rates, if you look at the formula, <coughs> excuse me, we look at the formula I showed you a little few minutes. So, re, re, uh, return times the probability of that return. So we got to, we're going to do it for each of them. For, for this three, for this, uh, you know, uh, P1, P2, P3, and then R1, R2, R3. So we do it um, here. The good thing is they say like, if we do one example, you can copy the formula down and it will calculate the rest. Remember to put your equal sign and click on this. This P, uh, R1 times except the asterisk symbol is, is the times and the probability of this. Then you press the enter key. Give it this and then click on this. When this tick cross changes to a skinny cross on this side, click, hold, drag. So you calculate the rest of them. Okay. Now, um, to find the uh, return, expected return, uh, Remember, this is R times P, which is rate, uh, rate of return times the probability of that return. And the formula say that it wants, um, <clears throat> it wants, um, let me show you what the formula says. Formula for the uh, expected return is sum of X times PX. So sum of RI times PI. So the sum of them, you get the sum, um, to get the expected return, see expected return will be equals. You will add all this. To click on it. Hope you can see this. Yeah, you can see it. That's good. So, it was then click on this. Plus, click, plus, click. Then press the enter key. See that is your expected return. Now. Uh, we, we, we're going to change this to percent. But what we see is 8%. But I'm going to undo it because we haven't finished answering the question. Why? Because the question also wants us to find the standard deviations. So let us find the standard deviation. Then we can now change everything to percent. Okay? So let's find, to find the standard deviation, um, the formula uh, will be, um, Oh, I didn't give you the formula. I'm going to write it. Um, let me take you to that place. So I can write it. Standard deviation uh, down. Okay. Make sure you can see this. Mm -hmm. All right. So the standard deviation uh, will be, um, we'll, get it, we'll get the variance. <laughs> But get the standard deviation, we get the variance first. So variance will be um I'll put it here. The variance will be variance. Okay, will be equals summation of um um probability. R squared times probability of R. Mm. So I'll put the sum of here. Yeah, I'm gonna put this. 
arrow squared. Yeah, return squared. Okay. Okay. Times. Um, I'm gonna use this as times. One minute. Yeah. Times probability of R P R. R it is gonna be R I squared. So let me make a slight correction to you. Uh <clears throat> Give me R I good. R one R I okay. R I squared squared okay. Time probability of I that's P I. Excuse me. Uh times P I. Okay. Minus the mean. That's the mean that we just got. Uh, mean um um is our uh, hat. But that is uh if you remember what I wrote on my the previous slide. See, arrow is the expected the mean, which is expected rate of return. R cap okay. Minus R height, R cap. So I'm gonna um put back this. Okay, what is it? Yep, here. Okay, um, one minute. Okay, R. I should put it as a squared. Yep. Uh, okay. All right, give me one minute. Yeah, uh, it's just a type in. <laughs> okay, good, got it. Our hats. Okay, our cap. Our, our bag. Squared. Okay. Variance. Let me do this. See. So this is the formula for the variance. R square, R I square times P I, where this is the return squared. Uh, individual return squared times the probability of each of them minus the um, average expected return squared. So which give us, um, this is the formula we'll be using. So we'll get it from the, um, from the Excel. Okay. So now I have the formula in now for the variance. So we'll go and get it. Okay. All right. Make it smaller so that we have enough room for this. Make it a little bit smaller. Maybe 20, 24 should be good enough. I'll make it bold. Okay. I'll take you to this place. Okay. Now we have one uh expected return R, then let's place the variance. Variance, first of, so we have, first of all, let's get the R square now. This is our R here. R square is to square all of this. Put equals, uh, put parentheses, click on this, the first one, close it. Square, you use the cap key. I'm gonna show you how it looks like. Raise to the power. See, see, they call it the cap key. Two. See, that's how you write it. Make sure you've seen it. Yeah. So once you put it that way, you press the enter key, give it a squared. Then you, you copy it down so that it will calculate the rest of them. So now we get the R squared. Now let's get R squared times P. Remember, in the formula I showed you, the first part of it is the R squared times P. See? So once we get it now, we can be able to calculate our variance. Yeah. And with the variance, we can get the standard deviation. Okay? So R squared minus P. See? Now, R squared times P equal. This is our R squared right here. 
times P. It's a P right here. Click on it. Enter key. Then drag it down, then copy it down to get the rest. So some of this, if you add all of this, you're going to get um, equal. Matter of fact, since we already did it here, uh, you can just copy this and then it calculate this sum automatically. Then we'll remove this. See, you have this. Now, this answer here is not the variance. It will help us to get the variance. This answer here is this part of the formula. This part of the formula, this one, sum of R squared times PI. See that? And this one, the expected return, we have it as 8% already. And you can see it here. And that is the part of the formula. This so that the variance is equals um sum of um the sum of r i square times b i, which we have as this. Okay, minus the mean. That's the expected return squared. Okay, which is um this one here squared. See, so we're gonna have equals um x minus uh this one here square raised to the power two. That's it. The one. 0 0.0166. Okay. Now from here we can now get the standard equation. We did the variance first because to get it, the equation asks us to find the expected return and the standard deviation. So we get the expected return of 8%. And to get the standard deviation, we need to get the variance first. That's what we did. So the standard deviation now becomes equals S T D E V. Okay. Um, dot s right because it's a sample of stocks okay of this matter of matter of fact we don't need that because we don't have a list just square root of variance give us a standard deviation square root of variance equals s q r t as square root parentheses click on this and that give us enter key point one two eight eight four zero nine eight seven so now we can change all this to percent so the answer come this okay eight percent return and thirteen percent standard deviation so let's make it uh, to the smart places you know make a uh, format this uh, by making them to the smart places what did I do I just uh, highlighted them right click Choose format cells, uh, percentage is here, then make it to the smart place. And then click OK, 3.88. So you can see it in uh, the answer in here. So here we have, oops, excuse me. Gotta, oh, well, it's still good. But I want it to be in a formula part. Right, yep. So let me put the answer right here. Okay, equals uh for our variance, I got 1.66 percent to 0 0.0166. Okay, uh zero point. Zero one six uh, six six or one point six six percent. <laughs> okay, and the standard deviation is twelve point nine percent. You can see from our calculation here. If you run this twelve point eight eight, which is twelve point nine percent. Okay, uh, which is can also see right here. So twelve point nine percent. That means it is a volatile stock. 
uh, the stock is risky, a little bit risky because you look at, uh, that's why it is 25% today, um, 10% next day. Then last uh, following day, it went, went negative. So it is more, it's very volatile. That's why it had a high standard deviation of 12.9%, which is the same thing we got in our calculations here. Okay? But the return is good, 8% return. That's, that's not bad. That's the expected return. Now, it's not bad, 8%. Now, um, in the subsequent week, in days, I will be looking at how to estimate uh, risk and return using historical data. Uh, thank you for listening tonight. And I will see you again in my class tomorrow. Bye-bye.